Hello saints and by the grace of God future saints today's question is a good one although it's uh, it's caused much confusion and controversy within the religious community and uh, you know I use the phrase religious community because it seems that every denomination has their own version of what repentance means today however will bypass what the world thinks repentance means and will go straight to the truth God's Word and by rightly dividing will uncover how God defines the word repentance instead of relying on man's religious interpretation which you know happens to be wrong 100% of the time so the question for today what does it mean to repent what is repentance now the first thing we need to do is look at some facts concerning the word repentance did you know the word repent is found 45 times in the King James Bible repentance is found 26 times repented is found 32 times repentist is found one time repenteth is found five times repenting one time and repentings with an s is one time a total of 111 times in both the old and new testament now the word repent in its various forms is found 46 times in the old testament and 65 times in the new testament it's interesting to note that out of uh of the 46 times the word re appears in the old testament God does the repenting 28 of those 46 times. Let me repeat that. Out of the 46 times the word repent appears in the Old Testament, God does the repenting 28 out of 46 times. Just about half. So, one example that we see is in Exodus chapter 32, verse 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. In addition to the 28 times God repents in the Old Testament, there's nine other passages that tell us God chose not to repent. Okay, now of the 46 times, a form of the word repentance appears in the Old Testament. Only nine times is man actually doing the repenting. 37 times it has reference to God's repenting or telling us of things about which you know God did not or will not repent so not sure if you've picked up on this or not but there seems to be a big problem here according to the religious definition of repenting they tend to use the word repent for turning from sin and in keeping with their version of repentance we see God turning from sin in dozens of verses okay and that's definitely inconsistent with God's character he cannot sin he can't make anyone else sin he's completely without sin but if repentance means a change of mind then it is consistent we see in his word God changing his mind about some things and and we have at least nine other things in the Old Testament where God says he will not change his mind now isn't it wonderful how rightly dividing makes things make sense now at times in the Old Testament the word repent carries with it the idea of feeling sorry or regretful sometimes where the words used we see a person repenting from what's wrong towards what's considered to be right. Other times, it speaks of repenting from what's right towards something that's wrong. Okay, It's sometimes used in connection with sin, but the word itself doesn't mean turning from sin. It means a change of mind. Another time in the Old Testament, the word repentance is about a person going back on his word. Now look with me at Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man, that he should lie, neither the son of man, that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? 
or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The Greek word for repent or repentance is, let's see if I can pronounce this, it's metanoeo. And I'm going to put that on the screen so you can all see that. And metanoeo, or the first one, metanoia, is Greek, meaning repentance. It's a noun. And the metanoeo is also Greek, means repenting. It's the present action. It's the verb. Okay? It means to change one's mind. And both words are identical in definition. Okay? They both mean to change one's mind. Now, the Strong's definition means to think differently, to reconsider, to think the opposite afterwards, okay? It's these two Greek words, metanoeo, iao, or I'm sorry, uh, oia and oeo that are used each and every time regarding salvation. Now, the problem and confusion isn't in preaching repentance. The problem is when definition uh, the wrong definition is assigned to the word repentance. Okay, for example, using the wrong definition, people go out and tell others that salvation comes only after a person stops sinning. And this is in direct contradiction to God's word, okay? That one is saved by grace through faith alone. Paul's gospel, our gospel for today. So, how many times have you seen people on the street corner yelling, repent of your sins, repent and be saved, repent or burn in hell, and so on and so on. The problem is that this use of the word repent is nowhere in the Bible, okay? Let me say it again. It's not, N-O-T, not in the Bible, folks. So, if it's not in the Bible, then where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from the author of lies, the author of confusion. That's where it's coming from. And it's teaching the wrong gospel. It's teaching a gospel of salvation by works, okay? The wrong dispensation. And another thing it does is it tells people that they must stop sinning, okay? That they have to clean up their lives before even thinking about getting saved, all right? So what do they do? What do they do? Most people, they start going to church. And nine times out of ten, okay, it's to a salvation through works denomination, all right? Just driving them further and further from true salvation, which is by faith alone, and it's just a vicious cycle. Now, look with me at Luke chapter 13, verse 5. I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Now, this is Jesus speaking, and we need to determine the context by rightly dividing and by knowing which dispensation this is taking place in. Now, remember Luke is during the dispensation of the kingdom on earth the earthly kingdom salvation by faith and works this is before paul before the mystery gospel okay before the mystery gospel had had been revealed to paul so we're looking at jesus in the gospel of the earthly kingdom promised to the jews here now the context of this verse jesus jesus is telling them that they needed to repent or change their mind regarding regarding punishment and sin. In this passage, Christ was talking to good people who believed that people suffered only because of their sins, and they concluded that those in Galilee whose blood Pilate mingled with the sacrifices and those on whom the tower of Siloam fell on were great were greater sinners because they died such horrible deaths. So Jesus contradicts the thinking of these self-righteous people and tells them that they needed to repent or change their mind and see themselves as being lost too, or they would perish in their own self-righteousness. By reading the passage in context, you don't have to know Greek uh, to see that the word repent here doesn't mean feeling sorry or turning from sin. The reason why there's such a misunderstanding over the word repentance is because the Bible defines it in the correct way and religion defines it in whatever's convenient for them at the time. Also, there's another reason for the confusion over the meaning of repentance, and it stems from the Catholic and Protestant denominations. Okay, You see, the Catholics invented what's called penance, P-E-N-A-N-C-E, -E, inflicting pain or suffering to, to oneself for their sins, flagellation, beating oneself with a strap, for example. 
the Protestants invented penitence, which is feeling guilty or sorry for their sins. Now, let me tell you, dear saints, let me tell you that neither penance nor penitence are in God's word. These are blasphemies invented by evil men to keep its people under control. Instead of using a physical straitjacket, they use a mental straitjacket called religion. Okay, it's really that simple. Now, unfortunately, over the centuries upon centuries of time, people have confused biblical repentance with religious penitence and penance. Okay, now, biblical repentance is not turning from one's sins, and it's not feeling sorry for one's sins. These are religious definitions, and we shouldn't be concerned with traditions and denominations. The only thing we need to concern our, ourselves with is what God says in His Word. His Word is eternal, and His Word is truth. One famous passage that most people are familiar with regarding the word repentance is actually in Genesis chapter 6, verses 4 through 8. Now, there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man, whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Hallelujah. Was God turning from his sin here in this passage? Was God feeling guilty because of his sin? God is God and he has no sin. So obviously repented here doesn't mean turning from sin or feeling sorry for sins. It's clear by the context that God repented. He changed his mind. He decided to start all over again. He had a change in his thinking. He began to think about man differently because men at that point had become more and more rebellious against him. Okay, They were only thinking evil continuously. Another passage is in Exodus 13, chap uh, Exodus chapter 13, verse 17. And it came to pass <clears throat> when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they returned to Egypt. Now, notice the word repent. Okay, Had the Jews seen the war in the land, uh, in the land of Philistines, they would have changed their minds, and they would have hightailed it back to Egypt. Again, it had nothing to do with feeling sorry for sins or turning from sins. Look with me, if you will, at Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, Israel had been murdering God's prophets for centuries. So, so now, John the Baptist is saying, you better start thinking differently about God. Start obeying Him and listen you know, to the message I'm preaching. Quit your rebellious and, and attitudes and, and change your thinking because Jesus Christ, your Messiah, your King of Kings, is coming. All right? Now, another one in Romans chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. Now, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. The context here, we see that God will fulfill his promises to Israel one day. Once God promises something, he doesn't repent. He doesn't go back on his word and break his promise. Again, we see that repentance in God's word has nothing to do with suffering or feeling guilty for sins. Okay? Now, in conclusion, dear saints, 
Repentance is changing your thinking, your thought process, having a renewed mind, brought on by the indwelling Holy Spirit as you read, study, and believe the Bible rightly divided. Repentance will cause you to think differently, and a change in lifestyle will follow. Remember, the, the biblical repentance is not turning from your sins, and biblical repentance is not related to penance or penitence. Okay. Also keep in mind that under the dispensation of the kingdom, Israel's program, repentance was necessary for their salvation. All right? They were under a program of faith plus works back then. Now people who don't rightly divide will put themselves into the wrong program or dispensation and they'll try to follow Israel's program. Then they start believing that repentance is needed for salvation and this is where the confusion stems from unrightly dividing God's Word. Now in today's program, the Gospel of Grace, repentance isn't needed to gain salvation. Repentance is the result of your salvation. The result of being made into a new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay, you see the difference? Now friends, am I saying that there's something wrong with feeling sorry or bad when we sin, when we fall, when we do something against our, our own conscience or against the Lord no that's not what I'm saying at all in fact if you don't feel sorry if you don't feel bad when you sin then something's wrong you see the very fact that you feel bad or sorry at times horrible is proof that you're a child of God it's proof that you've become a new creature a new person in Christ Jesus our feelings of guilt and sorrow are promptings from the Holy Spirit that we need to stop and pay attention. It's his warnings to us that we're missing the mark and we need to change course. In fact, if you don't feel guilty or sorry when you sin, then let me tell you, I'd be very worried and I'd question your salvation. Consider it a good thing when you feel sorry for sinning. It's direct proof of your identity in Christ. Be sorry. Thank our Lord Jesus for what he's done for you and move on. You should be more thankful than sorry, folks. God loves you. You're a fellow heir with his son. You're a child of the Most High God, the Creator himself. Hopefully, you have a better understanding of repentance as the Bible defines it. We all need to change our thinking, throw away the denominational definitions we've been taught, and rely on God's definitions, which are always rightly divided. Thanks for studying with me, Saints. See you on the next video.